Recently, while I was browsing Twitter, I saw this ad by the Central Bohemian region, which surrounds the largest city of Czechia, Prague. The ad had a giant tagline, Utečte z města, translated as Escape the City. The original poster correctly argued that people escaping from the city only means tons of urban sprawl, car-dependent infrastructure, pollution, stuff like that, which will ultimately make the city even worse. This trend of people escaping the city for satellite towns and villages in Czechia has been going on for at least 20 years, and even longer in places like the US. In this video, we'll take a look at the continuously sprawling cities of the Czech Republic, and how continuing down this path will only doom us to the same fate as American cities suffered in the past. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it would really help out. Thanks and onto the video. Although sprawl only really became a problem from the second half of the 20th century, expansion to the outskirts of cities is definitely not a new thing, it has been happening, in some capacity, for centuries. For example, the garden city concept from the late 19th century advocated for people to move out of the city into smaller communities, farther away from the city, escaping the industrial revolution era city for a closer connection to nature. However, these didn't really present a problem, urban planning wise. These garden cities were still quite compact and they were connected to the large city with rail lines. The real problems started right after the end of the Second World War. After the war, the US found itself at the top of the world. The conflict didn't reach its soil and after the hostilities ended, all the factories building Shermans, Jeeps and military trucks started churning out passenger cars and other consumer goods. With that, a new age of urban and transportation planning emerged. Trains, trams and other railway technology was seen as obsolete, with the car being seen as the future. Tens of millions of new cars entered the public roads in the US just in the 1950s alone. To accommodate the shift in the social climate, as well as all of the new cars and their hunger for physical space, a lot of cities were demolished and subsequently rebuilt for the car. Sprawling suburbs were built around the edges of previously dense cities, creating what is now well known as suburban sprawl. The rise of car-centric suburbia also brought on a different type of hardship, economic and racial inequality. Around the time the car took over American cities, the populations of said cities were moving to the suburbs en masse. However, not everyone could afford a car or two and a plot of land outside of the city. This, as well as blatantly racist practices like redlining or outright denying housing to people of color, led to even starker racial and economic divides between the population. After the initial rise of car-centric suburbs in the US, this pattern of urban planning spread to lots of places around the world, mostly around the capitalist Western Bloc. However, even in Western Europe, suburbs weren't as sprawling as in the US or Canada, for multiple reasons. Firstly, the US subsidizes the absolute ever-loving fuck out of gasoline. In 2022, subsidies towards the fossil fuel industry reached 757 billion US dollars. To put that number in scale, according to the International Monetary Fund, the GDP of the Czech Republic in 2024 is 343 billion dollars. Just in 2022, the US shoved the value of two whole Czech economies into direct and indirect fossil fuel subsidies, with another 71 billion dollars to spare. Secondly, the US, as a single country, has far more land than any single European country. In comparison, the Eastern Bloc developed in a more dense manner, at least until the 1990s. However, after the economies of Central and Eastern Europe transitioned from centrally planned to capitalist in the 90s, the urban planning trends that happened from the 50s to the 70s in North America started happening here. Welcome to 90s Czechia. We've got ugly houses, businessmen who definitely made their money completely honestly, and definitely didn't kill the competition and toss their remains into a water reservoir, and more. During this time, those who gained wealth wanted to move away from their commie block apartments into satellite towns and villages, and build their own little castles there. The result of this are quite bizarre houses, the architecture style of which is known as Podnikatelské baroko, translating as Entrepreneur Baroque. 
these almost exclusively appeared at the edges of cities or in satellite towns around the edges of said cities. As the 90s turned into the 2000s and especially from about 2010 onwards, more middle class people were able to afford building a house at the edges of the city. Because of that, the small towns and villages at the edges of cities started to rapidly grow putting strain on everything from water infrastructure to roads and railway lines and more. Some suburbs, like Pruhonice near Prague, started to really take on the shape and form of American suburbs, being built next to a highway, being a landscape of single-family homes and cul-de-sac, with barely any businesses among the developments, etc. With no railway line to speak of, take three guesses at how the residents get to their jobs, which are mostly located in Prague, you guessed it, it's cars. Now, in the 2020s, the pendulum has swung into the opposite direction. Real estate has become really, really expensive in and around Prague, so prospective home and property buyers have to buy plots of land far away from the city, because that's the only place that is somewhat affordable. Now, you might say, so what? So what if people live farther away from the city, in satellite towns, and commute every day to the city and back? I personally believe in the freedom to live your life however you want to. However, this has its limits. I have nothing against people who choose to build or buy a house in some suburban community outside of the city, but what I do have a problem with is the implications of that. Many suburbs are served by rail lines or other high-capacity form of public transport, like Černošice in the south of Prague or Říčany in the southeast of Prague. Which is great, because they allow lots of suburbanites to get into the city in a clean, space-efficient way. Railway stations also promote density, because developers and planners want the largest number of people to be served by that station. However, more and more suburbs are springing up and growing in places with no or very inefficient rail service. And because of that, the population is either forced to use sometimes quite inefficient bus service or cars. This means that lots of commuters from around Prague bring their cars into the city with them. Partly because it's simply comfortable to drive your butt everywhere, and partly because we don't have enough parking rights at the end of transit lines. This leads to the omnipresent congestion during the mornings and evenings, worse air quality, polluted water, noise, etc. To sum up, the city doesn't have enough physical space to accommodate the growing number of cars on our roads every year and this will continue to get worse until we do something about it. You may ask, well, but what could be done? First, we need to build more housing, period. Getting approval for building something in this country is like trying to avoid getting wet in the rain by dodging all the raindrops. Unless you're a Toho player, it's pretty much an impossible task. Second, building more park and rides at the end of transit lines as well as making them easier to use, would be a good step. Third, we should provide alternatives to driving cars for those living in suburban communities. Building new rail lines would be ideal, but pretty much impossible today, at least with our current systems. However, even something like running feeder buses to larger public transport stations, or encouraging cycling to those stations where possible, would help to reduce the congestion on the city's roads. In conclusion, suburbia, at least in its current, car-centric form, is absolutely unsustainable, both economically, environmentally and socially. Suburbs will always exist, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to make them better for all. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Aero Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! Although sprawl only really became a problem from the second half... <laughs> hmm. Ah. However, even in Western Europe, suburbs weren't always as sprawling as in the US and Canada. For mo Four. Come, bruh, bruh. <laughs> as the 90s turned into, into the... Hey, bro. Come on. <laughs> Third, we should provide alternatives to... Alternatives. Four syllables. <laughs>